Alright, well, we're getting ready for a second crop day. We're still about a week out, but we're doing some upgrades. So that is a stinger extension for this. So we broke the wagon in the last crop. So we're going to take this end little tip off and put this extension on there and then put the tip out on the end so it'll make it a lot easier to blow it directly in the truck without spilling a whole bunch. Okay. We basically just lifted the pallet up with the one on it and then backed up and got it hooked on. They're putting the bolts in. Then we'll move the pallet out of the way and we just, then we have to put the tip on and a couple hook, hook up a couple electronics and some hoses and it should, in theory, be ready to go. There we go. It's like a 12 foot extension. Great. Should be able to get into the trucks with that. That's great, Roger. Another thing we're having to do, as well as put that spout on, is these are all the knives. So this is a new knife, and this is an old knife. So they're pretty worn out, if you can tell how much is on that one versus that one. So we're in the process of changing all the knives. We already changed them on that chopper with the big spout on it. This one doesn't have a spout, but we're changing the knives on them. And then we should be good for next crop. Welcome out to second crop hay harvest. I am out here in the hay field. My dad is right there, right there, swathing. So I'll show you that for a second. So he's coming along. Now this is a New Holland swather with a 20 foot head on it. And he cuts at about 16 miles an hour. He really flies in this thing get a lot done I know this field this field is let's see I think this side is about a hundred acres and there's about 20 or 30 acres on the other side and he just has this little triangle piece here left to do so he'll be done real quick and I'm out here with the rake starting to rake and we're gonna start chopping tomorrow but I know last hay harvest video I didn't get any video of the swather, so I figured I should probably stop while he's still cutting and get some video of it. For everybody out there wondering if he's going too fast, he's going to hit deer and all these animals. We really don't have any animals out here in our fields. I've never seen a deer out here. I've never seen a bunny. Uh, we've seen a couple of snakes and some skunks, maybe a cat or a dog, but mainly skunks. If we're going to hit anything, it's going to be a skunk. So don't worry about that. We're not going to hit anything. And the reason we go back and forth like this is because we rake two rows together. It makes it easier for the choppers when they come. Also, I'm really sorry about the wind because it's always windy here and sometimes I forget my mic. I'm now in the uh, in the tractor. Might be a little bit less windy in here, so. He really cruises in that thing. I know there's a lot of other brands of swathers out there, but there's not very many that have a 20 foot head on them. Basically a big lawnmower and it does a really good job. Got that little piece, he'll be done with this field in about, I don't know, five minutes. Me, on the other hand, with the good old rake, it's gonna take me a long time to do this pivot. 
but we'll get going. It's like that. He is done. I haven't even done one little round, and he's already way over there. You can see the roof, the little yellow roof moving. And I haven't even done one round in this field. I mean, he, he finished real fast. <laughs> I was right there, and I was just going around the pivot. I didn't even make it around the pivot once before he finished all that whole corner, so. Yeah, he's really flying. You can see the dust right there. He's opening up the section. There's a canal that runs right there. Uh, we use those for watering the fields. And uh, yeah, the other part of this field is on the other side of the canal. So he's over there getting that opened up. We are about to start. So we have to get the bag onto the bagger. So it has this rack right here that we just slide off. And then the bag will sit on that. And then that lifts it up, and then we can slide it on. Let me get that lowered. Got the strings that are on the top and then these arms flip over the top to hold the bag on and we lift it back up these bags they're 400 feet long and they're I think 12 foot diameter and that's it now we have to pull this on I have to go lower the this is a pan down here that's what the oh are you okay are you good yeah string, is broken. string snapped uh -oh. the bag will sit on this pan so I have to lower the pan down so we got it slid onto the pan, but there's always a wrinkle. So we're trying to get this pushed in. <clears throat> Push it in, and then you have to cut all the strings, and then you can tighten the pan up, and that keeps the bag from coming off. It'll just let a little bit out at a time. Now we have to pull the bag out. That's probably good. Then we roll it up, twist it, okay. and tie it. That's what these bags look like when they're all full. Just big two. following Josh and we put that big extension on there so it'll be really interesting to see how that works we've never uh, we've never done that before I know a lot of the self repels just shoot into the trucks and don't use wagons a lot of people don't use wagons so I guess we'll uh, we'll see how that works should work pretty good I need to unfold my rake so I need to turn the hydraulics on and then I need to extend the slide. So, do one side at a time. I do need to be moving when I do this or else it'll pull the tires off the bead. So, we'll extend one side. Make sure I don't hit the pivot because I'm not watching where I'm going. And we'll extend the other side out. Oh, gotta straighten up. Going all crazy in the field here. 
I usually put that, there's numbers on it. I usually put the numbers. Okay, I can stop now. I usually put these numbers, there's numbers on this little piece right here. But I usually put that five right over those hydraulic valves on both sides and that seems to be about right. So now we need to move the baskets out. And there's more numbers over here and I usually set this on where the white line is. I set it on six. And then I just try and make them, for some reason one side's on six, the other one's not quite on six. But now they're set up and they're even. If I flip this switch right here, flips the back, the flips them on, raise them up so they don't mess up everything. And we'll get rolling here. Okay, I just got onto the row. Get past that, lower these down. We'll start raking. I rake at about six miles an hour. I can go faster, but the hay, we, since we're silaging, our hay is still pretty wet. Um, it has to have enough moisture to go through the choppers and into the bagger. So it's still pretty wet. And that's why we didn't actually even, we didn't even rake first crop because the hay was so wet and heavy that this wouldn't even rake it. Because if it's too wet and heavy, the baskets will just stop and then I'll just push all the hay. So, so didn't even rake first crops. So this is the first time using the rake this year. This rake is a Twinstar G37 and it does a really good job with wet hay. We had a G27 or G36, I can't remember what it was. We had the smaller one last year or two years ago, but it would keep, it would plug up really easy. So we upgraded to this one because this one is supposed to be for silage hay. Now this crop, we have a little bit more hay than last crop. Last crop, we just had this pivot. We planted a bunch of new seeding earlier in the year. And so now that this is second crop on this field, the new seeding is also ready. It's still pretty short, so it's gonna be pretty light first crop of new seeding. And we're only actually chopping, I wanna say about 60 acres of new seeding. So we have this field and with all the new seeding, it'll be a total about 300 acres of hay, but there's one field of the new seeding that I think is 100 to 110 acres that we are actually just gonna bale it. We're not gonna silage it. So it'll get cut, but then it has to dry for about a week and a half to two weeks. And we'll have to rake it, flip it over to get, make sure it's nice and dry. Cause if you put up, if you bale hay too wet, the it'll actually start to get moldy and stuff inside and, cre and it'll create heat which will then like, it'll self combust. It'll just light itself on fire. So you have to get the moisture level down enough that you don't create that heat and burn your whole haystack to the ground. So, and that has happened uh, just a mile from my house, two years in the last maybe seven years, there was a haystack that just lit on fire. It seems like we get at least one a year in the valley, the haystack, a whole, whole haystack will light on fire. Usually it's just because there was one bale in that whole stack that was too wet. And that one bale lit up and lit the whole sack on fire. So we don't want to do that. Well, there's a little coyote right there. I don't know if you can see him. There's a coyote just inspecting the hay for mice. He's just on the other side of that little patch of hay. Christopher got full, dumping into the truck. His wagon looks crooked. Oh, maybe it's just his lid. get over by Josh. I'm not sure where he's at in the field, but 
I want to see. I still haven't seen how that. I still haven't seen how that uh, big extension works. Now you can see Christopher's going again, shooting it into his wagon. Cruising along. I think they can go about four or five miles an hour, which is a little bit faster than our old New Holland choppers used to go. Well, there's my little coyote friend again. Wandering around, he's right there. He doesn't seem very afraid of us. Josh has been having some troubles with this. He's plugged it up twice, but we're not quite sure why. So he just got it unplugged and he's gonna start it and see if it will actually shoot it out this long spout. I mean, it's, it's made to do this, so I don't know why it wouldn't. But uh, yeah, we've already plugged this up twice. happening is as soon as it catches the hay and feeds it in it just plugs in the chute right here instead of instead of pushing it all the way out the end it just immediately plugs so I don't know if we're doing the hay too wet for this chute or if you have to do dry hay I'm not sure but if anybody has any ideas I have been continually unimpressed by these Dion choppers they work okay when they're working uh, you can go about a mile an hour faster than our old New Holland, but they seem to be a lot more maintenance and a lot more work. So, not super impressed. All right, guys, I had to come back to the shop because this bar broke. So it's the bars that go around the bottom. Basically, they make the hay come off so the tines don't just carry it around. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, I keep breaking these. I've broken, this might be the second or third one that I've broken. We never broke them on our old one and they're the same bar, same everything. But for some reason, I keep breaking them on this one. So it's not hard to change. There's just one bolt on each side, but I just don't know why I'm breaking them. Maybe they were brittle from the factory or something. Well, there's the new one. There's the old one. So just a little, little bent, that's all. This is the last one we have, so hopefully I don't make any, break any more of them. So the auger on the header, the sprocket that runs it, the shaft is so bent that the sprocket wobbles like this. I can turn it on and show you, but it can't be used like that, and more than likely they don't have the part that so we'll have to order it. By then the hay will not be choppable. We'll just have to bail it. So his is broken, and his spout won't work because it just plugs up immediately. So, <laughs> and I just got done fixing my rake back up. It's a good thing we have a baler because I don't know if we'll be able to chop anymore. That's talking right there. Just wobbling. Yeah, 
that's not gonna work very good. I guess we just weren't meant to grow hay. Okay, we got Christopher's chopper going again. He has to go slow to try and not bend that shaft. But he's currently chopping, this is all new seeding, so it's very light. All this is just very thin. It wasn't very tall, but we wanna make sure we cut them at the same time as the other crop. That way they're all on the same schedule. So he's over there attempting to cut the new seeding. If it's too light and too dry, he can't get it to blow up into the wagon. So it looks like we might be able to do this new seeding. Might be able to chop it. If we couldn't chop it, we'd just have to bale it. But it looks like we might be able to chop it. We have a truck right here heading over there. I just raked the first round around the field to see because if we can't chop it, then we don't want to rake it. We need it to dry out more to bale it. But it looks like he's able to blow it into his wagon pretty good. So we'll uh, probably keep on going here. All right, well, now I'm right next to Christopher. See how this kind of works now. Speed up just a little bit because I can go a little bit faster than you can. He's able to pick it up pretty good.
guys, well, I was wrong. We did end up raking this whole field. This was one we thought was gonna be too dry and we were gonna have to bale it, but I came out and checked it and the moisture was good, so we ended up just raking it. Um, but that will finish up this hay harvest. We still have to chop this and bag it and everything, but as far as this video, I think this is gonna be the end of it. I just folded this in and I'm headed back to the shop now. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.